Hi there. Um, welcome to one more session of the signature tires uh, for AMCO um, by measurements. Uh, my name is Antonio Rodriguez. Um, I <clears throat> came from Portugal. Um, I live in US for five years now, and um, and I've been uh, um, working for front range anglers um, in Boulder uh, for those five years. Um, the presentation we're going to see tonight is about um, some of the flies that we we used to use when we were competing. Um, and of course, you, you can expand them to the, the everyday fishing. Um, the most known probably right now and all the buzz that is going on will be probably the Spanish perdigons. But today, tonight I'm gonna tie some of, of my the dry flies that I used to, to fish with. So I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm gonna start uh, with, uh, with um, an adult uh, marsh brown uh, is a big, a big mayfly that I like to use uh, as a single dry or as a dry dropper. So that will be the, the first fly that you're gonna see tonight. All right, and right now we're gonna tie an, the adult marsh brown. I'm gonna tie it in the size 14 uh, TMCO uh, 900 uh, BL. Um, the, the thread I'm gonna use is dark brown on it. So being a CDC fly, um, I'm gonna tie the entire body on CDC, uh, tail on, cock the leon. So let's start with the tail. So good amount of fibers in there. On his right flies, I, I tend to do a little bit longer tail than I do on the nymphs. Uh, this one, probably the same length of the chink of the harp, very similar. Um, for the segmentation, I'm gonna do some uh, copper, um, flat tinsel, extra small, or uh, you can do also with the extra small wire. And the extra small on the wire is very important to don't bring any weight to the fly that you don't want. You want the fly to be light. Uh, so the body, what I do, um, I grab the, the feathers, the CDC feathers, what I do, I use the, the, the lower part of the feather to take those fibers out and I'm gonna use them as dubbing for the body. So grab them back. Like this I'm gonna do is use them as dubbing. Of course you can use also that is already packs of CDC dubbing that you can use. Uh, natural brown is a good color, natural or brown, natural brown. If you want to do something, this is a big mayfly. If you want to do something similar to, to on the during summer for a green drake, for example, you need to change a little bit the color and go go with that olive, for example. All right. Now, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna Try to cut these fibers in a good conic shape. Can I do some segmentation here? Not a lot. Three, four turns would be more than enough. Of course, it depends on the size of the hook you're using. If you're tying the size 10 or 12, uh, you can go ahead and put a couple more turns 
on a size 14, three to four turns are more than enough. All right. Now, this fly has a split wing on the CDC. So to, to split that, those CDC fibers to build the wings, I'm going to use some use a red or orange um, you can do floor fibers for example that work well oh, this guy's here All right. Now there is two options. You can build a torx with C with more CDC, or you can use like a squirrel dubbing, for example, will work well too. Um, the CDC, of course, give a little bit more flotation to the fly. All right. Now, what I do here is I stack three or four feathers on CDC. And I cut them on the same spot. And I'm gonna use the fibers that remain. Take the flies out from the the feathers out from the, the front of the fly here. And now this next step is very important because it's the way when you're gonna split the wing in two, and you're gonna need to try to separate in two very similar. The quantity of the fibers needs to be very similar on both sides. So to have a good balance. So now that I split the wing, as you can see, I'm gonna use these four fibers as a good spot for me to see the fly on the on the distance and also on the moving waters. So pull them back, couple turns. And fly is done. All right. And now we're gonna cut the floor fibers in a way that you can have a spot that you can see far away. This is a good flight to fish on pocket water also and has very good visibility. And then at the end, what you're gonna do is just take some of these fibers out, give a lot of volume. So, and this, and this is the Marsh brown. Of course, you can always finish it with a little bit of super glue or varnish on the head. I tend to don't do it to keep them a little bit uh, lighter. Hey there. Um, so I saw a couple of questions here about uh, uh, about the marsh brown and also about. Um, about the difference between fishing here and fishing in Europe. Um, 
the first one, um, the the best the best size for this fly. <clears throat> there's not a specific size that is best. Uh, depending on the river you fish, uh, depending also on the on the level of water you have, depending on the hatches you have. If you have a hatch of small marsh browns or small mayflies, this fly, if you tie it in a size um, 18, 16, 14, it will work very well. If you have a green drake hatch or or a great drake and a big mayfly, a uh, size um, 14, 12, uh, and size 10 will be the, the best sizes. Um, I like the size um, 12 and 10 to fish dry dropper, for example. Um, I like the, the smaller the smaller sizes to fish pocket water during summer. So depending on the, on the, on the situation, depending on the conditions, um, you can change the size on this fly. Uh, of course, if you're gonna do a dry dropper rig, depending on the size of the nymph you're gonna use, um, I'll go uh, uh, bigger with a heavier fly and smaller with a small fly. Um, another question that I have here, um, is uh, what leader do you do I use? Um, so if you if I want to specifically fish with dry flies in pocket water, I'll have a short leader, probably a seven and a half or or uh, even a nine foot long leader. And then I have uh, and I'm going to explain that for me is is short, uh, nine foot long uh, plus probably two three feet of seven uh, x or 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 six or five x, and use just that dry fly. Um, if I'm fishing a big river that I don't know if I'm gonna fish dry, dry dropper or or your nymph rig, I have a hybrid leader that I use, uh, and usually I've used that. I can use that for dry flies or dry dropper, and then of course change to the your nymph rig. Um, so um, another thing that I saw here, uh, a funny question is about the difference between the fishing in, on the front range and also. Um, and, and in Portugal, um, the biggest difference is the pressure. Um, there is way more pressure uh, on the front range. The number of anglers uh, is way higher here in, in, uh, in the front range and in the US. The second difference uh, is the we only have basically the native fish is uh, uh, brown trout. Uh, we have some rainbows in some lakes, but uh, 99% uh, is browns and they are native. So they are very spooky. So they make us fish with longer leaders, thinner tippet. Uh, the size of the flies is not that important. Depending on the hatch we have, you can change the, the sizes. What is important is be stealthy. And uh, usually you have one chance with those fish. So that's probably the biggest difference that I found between fishing in Portugal and fish on the front range. So um, the next the next fly that I'm gonna tie here um, is one of my favorite ones also, and uh, is is like jumping from from uh, a small airplane, uh, a huge airplane to a, a little a little uh, uh, a little bird. Uh, so what I'm gonna uh, tie right now is a um, BWO a bling olive emerger that. Um, I first saw something very similar in Spain and France, and, and then we adapt this wise to fish for grayling and uh, and also for brown trout in Portugal. So it probably the year on the, the late '90s is when we start seeing the, this wise, and of course we start to adapt in that to our fishing, uh, to our rivers, and of course uh, it's tied with some high vis the same way I tied the marsh brown, and uh, uh, to to. For us to be able, and of course, with age, like I'm getting a little bit older now, we need that little high vis uh, to to help us to see those small flies uh, on the water. So the next uh, the next fly will be the blueing olive uh, uh, emerger. All right, uh, right now I'm gonna tie uh, one of uh, my emergers. Um, and I'm gonna tie the blue wing olive. Um, I'm gonna use a, a TMCO um, 2487. Uh, this is a size 18. Um, curved, um, the idea of a curved hook is to let that uh, part of the body under, underneath the, the water. Um, and then the, the wing will be, will be a CDC. Um, I'm gonna use a 
a dark brown uh, thread that I apply. So I always try to make sure that I start a little bit, give a little bit of uh, room in there for us to build a wing. This is a very simple fly. Um, is very known. This kind of flies are this kind of tying and flies are very known in Spain, Spain, Portugal, France, Italy. Um, they do very well in different colors and sizes. So, I'm gonna build the body with some olive um, super fine dubbing. Right. So I came all the way down. All right. Now I'm gonna take out the excess of the uh, dubbing that I have here. All right. So the same way to split the wing like I do on the on any other CDC mayflies. I'm gonna use um, some floor fibers. All right. Now for the thorax, I'm going to use some, some squirrel dubbing. This step is very important because this is where you're going to build the base for your wing so a bulky bulky thorax is very important that will help you to keep that wing upright and then on the split also for the wing gonna use some cdc feathers three or four depending on the depending on the size you're tying um, if you go down to a size 20, 22, probably going to go three, two or three feathers will be enough. And like on wash brown, you're going to line the feathers and just cut it. All of them will be the same size and the fibers are exactly the same, the same size. Make sure you lock the wing very well, but don't pull it too tight and don't use too much turns because it will take you the room you need to finish the fly. All right. Now I'm going to split this wing in half, only two, so take a couple of fibers that I have here. Now I'm going to separate the wing. I like to turn the hook to me for, to be able to see if the wings and the fibers are in a good proportion. And then move back that uh, full of fibers again to build that little high vis spot. Couple turns and the fly is done. Couple little details. I like to pull these fibers and cut them if they are too long. 
and then I'll cut the four fibers also from here in a good size. All right. All right, there you go. And here you go, you have the blowing olive emerger. So I saw a couple more questions here. Um, so there's a couple of questions about the, the previous fly that I tied, the marsh brown. Um, so one of the, the, the questions was how many uh, CDC feathers I use, depending on the size of the fly I use, uh, or two or three or four, um, depending how much I want it to float and if I'm going to use it uh, as a dry dropper or just as a single dry. Uh, so between two, two and four or five feathers, depending on the size of the hook. I can tie, I tie this fly since um, size 10 uh, to a size 18, 20. So depending on the size of the, of the, um, of the fly that I'm gonna tie, uh, I need to adapt the, the number of feathers. And of course, if I want to use it as a, a dry for a dry dropper rig, I need to increase the number of uh, CDC, the, the amount of CDC also. Um, and for, for you guys to know, um, this this flies will be are already available in uh, in our fly shop. So go ahead and look on your local fly shop. Uh, if they are not there already, they will be very very soon. Um, also, this uh, um, this video will be um, will be on uh, on YouTube um, uh, for you guys to to check again. Um, so another question was about. Um, uh, for how long uh, did I compete? Um, I start on the late nineties, um, um, middle nineties probably, and I competed until my last competition was 2013. Um, so I did it probably 15 to 20 years. Uh, in between that, nine world championships, uh, a couple of Europeans. So uh, I would say, uh, over a hundred tournaments, so a lot, a lot of comp uh, competitions, a lot of time um, dedicated to that, and of course, uh, that was the spot, that was the place that I learned uh, the most part of what I know now, and of course, practicing um, to be at that level and to perform well at that level, you need to spend a lot of time on the water, you need to spend a lot of time uh, thinking about new patterns and how to improve other patterns to adapt to the fishing you want to do so uh competition gave me that gave me the i needed to be try to be a step ahead of of any other angler so you need to learn a lot uh, and another thing that i learned uh competing is uh working as a team uh was when we get better results uh so uh keep that in mind spend a lot of times uh, a lot of time on the water practice a lot think about what you're doing and of course, share share information, and that's what we do here at Amqua, here at Front Range Anglers. Uh, everyone that came in, we try to help to give you the best experience possible. Um, um, there was a funny question here about uh, uh, what is my favorite river to fish in Colorado. So, it is the Colorado. The Colorado River um, is my favorite uh, river to fish. Um, uh, in my in my shop, there is a, a joke that once in a while goes around that says that just because my fishing license says Colorado, uh, that's not the only river that I can fish, but it's the one that I spend spend more time and that that I enjoy more, and uh, and the reason is um, it's a big river, it has all kinds of waters that you can imagine. So the same day you can be fishing just dry dry rubber, heavy heavy urine nymphing. Uh, streamers, swinging wet flies, um, all that. So I love that river. I love, I, I enjoy fishing uh, big rivers, and uh, the Colorado is probably the number one. Um, another good question here about um, 
uh, if I fish this emerger on uh, my 10 foot three weight. I do. My 10 foot three weight is probably the one that I fish, well, except if I'm fishing streamers. Uh, 10 foot three weight is the rod that I use 90% of the time. Um, and the reason is uh, I can do um, a very good yearning thing with a 10 foot long, uh, 10 foot three weight. I can also, uh, is, I, I feel that it's more accurate um, than a 10 and a half or 11 foot long. And the reason is it's a little bit shorter, casts better. And of course, if you want to fish with a dry, a small emerger like this one, you can fish perfectly with a with a with a ten foot three weight. Of course, you need to have the right line to fish with it, the the right leader. Uh, of course, a uranium pure uranium fin leader won't do it. But if it's a hybrid leader or a, just a, a tapered leader, a nine foot nine foot a twelve foot long will fish well. I would advise you to use uh, six or seven x with this fly. Those are small flies. If you go with a heavy tippet. It doesn't uh, doesn't uh, that the drift is not as natural as a uh, thinner tippet. Um, another fun question: uh, What do you do to keep the CDC floating? So, uh, first thing that I do before I start fishing, I grab my fly, I drop a little drop of uh, uh, fly floating. Um, can be um, you have the amqua. This is like a silicone gel. That it, just a little drop on my hand. On my fingers, I rub my fingers, and then I, I put uh, I, with my fingers. I'm gonna cover or coat uh, the the CDC, just the CDC of the fly. And the reason is, I want that body to sink a little bit, and I want the CDC to be uh, to be floating. So that's the first thing I do before I, uh, I even cast uh, the fly to the water. And then, of course, every time that I I need to uh, re-dry the fly. I use or a piece of paper or any other device to uh, uh, Amadou, for example, to dry the 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 the, the fly, and of course silica salts uh, like the the dry shake from Amqua, uh, any of those salts or the the, uh, the Chamisaki is is an amazing um, floatant. Use that just for the CDC and you see how it floats very very well. The most important is when you get the fly, uh, use a piece of paper or Amadou and uh, try to absorb the water that you have on that fly. All right, uh, you're gonna, we're going to keep on, on small flies and also on CDC flies is similar to the one we tied before, uh, different body. The body will be on uh, in, in quill, uh, in peacock quill. So this will be a little midge that we used with the same concept of tying as we had on the uh, blowing olive, but this will be just a little midge. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the, the, the quill midge. Hi there. Um, now I'm going to tie you um, the little uh, little quill uh, midge um, with the CDC wings. So um, the body will be peacock um, quill. The hook is uh, TMC. C size 16 or 18. This one is the 18. Let's see if I here. Um, it's super simple. Is an emerger also. And as an emerger, what I always do is just uh, tie them on the, these little curve hooks. That way, the body will be underneath the water. So, what I do, I'm gonna lock the quill with a thread. All right, that's good. I like to move my vice a little bit sideways. To be able to see the segmentation that I'm doing on the on the fly, as you see, I use my finger to lock it every turn. I don't want it to break or come out, and that's a little bit of sport. And all right, and here you go. 
and mark it. And as you can see, there is a good segmentation body and thin. These images are very small, so that gives you the good, good looking segmentation in there. Next step, I'm going to use some flow fibers, red or orange or white, a color that you can see well. I like the orange flow fibers here. The function of the flow fibers is the idea of the flow fibers is to split the wing into the wing in CDC that I'm going to put in and also create a high vis uh, spot that you can see during fishing. All right. The thorax. Dark is a little bit of natural color um, squirrel dubbing. Like in the on the rolling olive emerger, it's always good to have a little bulky thorax on it that will help to split that wing in two. That's yeah, this will be enough. And pull these fibers back a little bit. Here you go. Take out some of these guys on top here because they're gonna mess with your wing fibers. All right, now for the wing, I'm gonna use a couple CDC feathers, I'm gonna stack them. Like this, and I gotta get them out like that. All right, just trying to have a good number of fibers the same length. Here. I'll lock the fibers here. All right. Lock those fibers down. I'm gonna I'm gonna use the four fibers to split the wing. Like I mentioned before in other flies, I like to turn the wing to me to be able to separate the fibers in a good and to be very balanced between both sides. So and all these four fibers back. And I'm gonna lock it down. Two or three turns, simple. And of course, you can always finish it with, uh, with some varnish or super glue. I like to keep them without that just to make them lighter on weight. And there you go, there's a little hot spot in there, a bit high vis spot. Now what I'm gonna do is just you know, clean some of the extra fibers from the dubbing. All right, there you go. You have this little CDC major murder. I hope you enjoyed that, um, that uh, little quill midge. Um, first, a little note. I wanted to say thank you to all of you who came by tonight and uh, watched this presentation. We still have a couple more flies to go, but I want to say thank you to all of you. 
uh, especially the ones uh, that are right now watching me in Portugal. It's probably 2.40 in the morning. So thank you for coming by. Thank you, Hoy, for being here. Um, so a couple nice questions here. Uh, that, that's good. That's good. So um, first was about what size tippet I use on this on this uh, uh, flies. So on on the quill image, on the Boeing Olive, uh, and uh, on the PMD emerger, that is also an uh, uh, Amqua uh, pattern. Um, I like to use um, as thinner as possible. Um, six, seven, eight. Uh, that's what I fish um, ninety percent percent of the time. I would say that uh, I I run I I spend probably over twenty spools of seven X a year. Um, if that's my my tippet to go, and uh, um, that's what I use mostly for for urine nymphing and also also on dry. So I spend a lot of uh, tippet, uh, especially seven X. And then I'll step down to eight or nine if needed, um, or if I feel that the fish are too big and they are not that uh, that picky, uh, I'll go to a six or to a five. But usually I'll, with this flies, six is already uh, uh, too much. Um, the next question I have here, there is a question here, if I could explain how to tie the hybrid leader. Um, Feel free to send me to send me an email at antonio at frontrangeanglers.com and I will send you the formula that of the hybrid leader that I that I tie is a little bit uh, uh, too long to explain during this presentation, but shoot me an email at antonio at frontrangeanglers.com and I will uh, send you a, um, a copy of the of the formula. Um, a great question here. Um, a great question here about uh, if the high vis. Uh, uh, if I feel that uh, ever the high vis will spook the fish, well, if if uh, if the balance on the fly is well done and the fly is not the V on the wing doesn't make it uh, drop, uh, and if he's well tied, uh, the fish the fish should not see the high vis, uh, and if the fly is uh, is uh, is falling to one of the sides, you need to try to balance it, open opening the wing a little bit more. Or if needed, cut the, a little bit of the high vis out. Um, I never felt that. I tied the same version without without the high vis, um, but I think the high vis is a, a, a plus on this fly because the, some of them are so small that you're gonna need that little orange spot or white spot depending on the high vis you want to use um, to to help you. If you feel that the fish are so selective that they are, they are uh, seeing the the high vis, well. Cut it off. Um, I never felt that. If the presentation is is well done, the only thing that the fish will see the silhouette of the two wings. They will never see the high vis. Um, but it's a good question. Thank you. Um, I I heard here that uh, about the we did these two flies that I tied. The last two flies that I tied. Basically, the difference is the body and the materials that I use on the body. And the question was if uh, if uh, if that is, is uh, in, I use that in different moments, or it has to be is the, is the the way I fish it, or is uh, the moment and the the bugs that I have. So the most important is not is not the body type, is the bugs that you have. And if uh, if uh, if I have a uh, um, the most uh, well the biggest hatch that I have, and I see if the the fish are eating midges, of course I'll go with the quill midge. Um, it represents better uh, a midge uh, body. Um, if if the hatch the hatch that I have is PMDs, so I'll go uh, with the, the the similar body to the what I did with the uh, blowing olive. I'll do in yellow, and uh, it will be a, a PMD. Um, if if uh, the hatch is blowing olives, I'll do the the olive that I that I tied a moment ago. Uh, so depending on the hatch that I have. I'll change from the the quill midge to the blowing olive to the to the to the PMD. So the moment and the hatch you have is what make me fish with one or the other, and not and not just uh, just um, just different flies for different moments. It's just it has to be with the with the bugs that you have hatching. Um, fun question about about urine nymphing. So 
um, the question is uh, something like uh, if I'm enjoying uh, the evolution or the 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 popularity of urinimphing. Well, uh, it's fun that uh, um, I would say ninety percent of the 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 questions that I have at the shop when they met me when they meet me they ask well you do uh, mostly urinimphing. And uh, they think the first questions they ask me is about urinimphing and not about rice or, or streamers or, or wet wise. And, um, and some, sometimes it's hard to, because uh, it's hard to explain how, uh, just because I competed doesn't mean that I just do urinimphing. And uh, you, to be a good competitor, uh, to, be, to be a good angler, I think you, you should, be, should learn how to fish, with, be good with urinimphing. And when I talk about your nymphing, I'm talking about all the evolution on, that we had on nymphing since since the the Polish style until the Czechs until the the French nymphing and then the Spanish and then the and then that what we call here in US your nymphing. For us in Europe, it's just nymphing. Uh, it's an evolution that we had, uh, especially on the rods and on the leaders on the flies that we are using. So it's fun. Uh, it's, it's fun to see how people get interested in your nymphing. But what I try to explain to everyone is um, your nymphing has a time and a place to use. Um, that is conditions that your nymphing is not more effective than a dry fly or a streamer or any, any other technique. So choose the right moment to use uh, the your nymphing. Um, there will be moments where dry fly fishing um, will be Dry fly fishing will be better than urine nymphing, dry dropper uh, streamers. And then, of course, urine nymphing is super effective, uh, but has a time and a moment to do uh, and a place to do. So, so I see here that is uh, a question of where I buy CDC from. So, it's very, I, I buy CDC from a lot of places, of, or let me rephrase it, uh, different brands. Uh, uh, Polish Polish CDC is very good. Um, uh, MFC uh, uh, um, a CDC is very good. There's a lot of different uh, uh, CDCs. is is not easy to get C good CDC here. Um, um, the same quality that we found in Europe. I was surprised with the quality of the CDC used on the on the samples of the the Amqua, um, the flies that, uh, this flies that Amqua is tying for me. And uh, keep, keep an eye on that. The quality was very, very good. If, if the production is exactly like the samples I saw, they will be amazing and you'll have a lot of fun. Um, another question was, uh, do, do I prefer red yarn? Um, easier to see underwater. Uh, the marsh brown, for example, on bigger flies, I, the red yarn, I, I, I use it a little bit uh, on the next fly that I'm going to tie. Uh, the Superman, sometimes I use it with red yarn, but the, the, the high vis, usually I use uh, flow fibers or uh, thinner fly fibers. I need thinner fibers to use it, and I want them to be straight, and uh, the yarn is a little bit more bulky, so I prefer to use the flow fibers. Uh, let me send a hug also to Brazil here. Um, so the next fly that we're going to see here, uh, will be, let me see here what I, what I have for you next will be the Superman. Um, Superman is a, is a, a caddis, uh, uh, tied on a parachute. So I hope you enjoy it. All right, right now I'm going to tie the Superman caddis. Uh, I'm going to use uh, a hook size 12 uh, TM code, 230BLH or BL, 230BL, sorry. And uh, I'm going to use just a 17 year uh, brown thread. Brown or black will work well. Olive will work well too. Um, the body on this cat is, is can be done in several ways. One of them, and the one that I prefer, is the an SLF um, dubbing and you can use several colors, can be olive, can be natural, can be brown. Um, 
of course, depending on the caddies that you have around the, the creeks or rivers that you fish. Um, I like to do a little. Usually, caddies are very bulky on the body. I don't tie them that bulky. I still like a little bit thinner profile. To make it light, to don't avoid to absorb a lot of water and then get too heavy. Um, this is a great. Um, it's a great uh, dry dropper uh, fly to use. Uh, so the body is built. Now I'm going to use for the wing, I'm going to use a little bit of uh, well, deer hair. Uh, you can use a natural color. Uh, this one I'm going to tie in the a little bit of olive. So the wing doesn't need to be too bulky. Um, just need to be thin enough for to make the fly float very well. Um, so I'm gonna take some some of those fibers out, clean a little bit. I always like to stack. Fibers. Right. It's a little bit longer than the curve of the hook, just a little bit, not much. Yeah. Tighten down a little bit. It will open a little bit at wing. I need to make sure that you. Go out and clean the front of this, the hook, just to make sure that you have room to work, finish the fly. All right. Go back a little bit in here. Next step is build the, the post for the parachute. And I'm gonna use some uh, some full fibers, orange. You can use Antron, also works well. And because this is a rider upper fly, I like to have a strong color that I can see very well. Down here, All right? I'm gonna keep the back side still. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna build. This step is important. I'm gonna do a little knot here, just to lock the thread, and I'm gonna build the post for the the parachute. So I'm going to do now the take the hook from the vise, put it in this position. Now what I'm going to do is just create that uh, some turns here to create a base for me to, to do the parachute and go. As you can see, we have a base for the parachute here. Um, for the parachute, you can use several colors for the hackle. Um, you can use gray, a done, or you can use a brown. All 
I like to do is just check the fibers here. I like to have a long, some long fibers. It'll be a longer, a wide, very wide parachute. Then we'll give a lot of, make this flight to be very, very stable. All right. This is locked. I'm going to pull that. Couple of turns here just to lock that. Feather right there. All right. As soon as the feather is locked, what are you going to do? Going to use a little bit more of this dubbing for the thorax up here and also to cover all the line I've been using. Let's take some of these fibers out of the front here and do another little knot here. Lock it. Now I'm gonna grab the hook again, bring it down to build a parachute. I'm gonna use an echo plier here to help. Two, three turns, four, and five. Make sure you clean all these fibers that can, can get mixed. I'm gonna do one more. All right. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lock my fingers the hook, open it, put it back. All right. Now, pull this fibers back to be able to see and to lock this ankle feather down. Finish this fly here, just build a little head here, lock that feather very well. And one, two, three turns. I'm gonna double it. This is a fly that is very easy to, to lose that ankle fiber from there. Okay, now a couple things. First, and the reason it's called the Superman is because it, these fibers that we use to build the parachute post, we're gonna let them long covering the, the wing, as you can see, so that it has a red cape. That, that's why we give him the, the name of Superman, you have a red cape. Now, I'm going to cut this parachute right here. What you should always check if there is not a lot of fibers on here and try to make it a little bit cleaner. So if there's a good balance of fibers on the heckle, if they're not balanced, just pull them aside a little bit. And then, also, you can get these fibers that stand up here, cut them out. What you want to go of this fly is to have an ankle, a parachute that is thin, not too bulky, or not too high on the on the on the post, and 
and with a good number of fibers and of course long fibers that give a lot of stability on that fly. There you go. This is a Superman caddis. All right. Um, I hope you enjoyed the the Superman. Um, funny, I have uh, one of the questions I have here. Um, what is the rig or what dries do I use um, for a dry dropper rig? So <clears throat> today I tied two of them already. Um, the Superman and the Marsh Brown. Um, the Superman is 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 a fly that. Uh, that we we saw the first time probably in 2005 um, was not the Superman. It was a similar caddis with a parachute uh, that we decided to uh, to improve and uh, bring them the bigger wing, uh, uh, thinner, less bulky, uh, thinner wing, uh, and uh, had that little cover on the on the wing uh, in red, um, and we call we call it Superman. That, that red cape is not just aesthetics, uh, it's for us to see it very well, uh, especially in pocket water. There's a lot of uh, small mountain rivers in Portugal. And that was amazing to fish uh, those pocket waters because you can see it very, very well. Uh, the longer fibers on the hackle, uh, on the parachute also give up, a, the, it's a very stable fly and very light. Uh, so, uh, that's a, an amazing fly for dry dropper. Uh, the second one is the marsh brown. Um, I use more the marsh brown as a dry draw on the dry dropper rig when when the water is a little bit slower, uh, and I use the Superman more on pocket uh, pocket water. Um, um, another question that I see here, very good. Uh, if I tie it as an as an attractor, uh, I don't. I don't usually. I try to use natural colors. Um, I use this 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 fly a lot during uh, when you have uh, on the on the little uh, mountain streams that you have uh, caddis hatches. I try to match the match the more or less the colors that we have more natural like a light brown, uh, an olive, uh, some black. Black will work well, um, but never purple. Um, I never tie them purple. It will work. I I believe it will work. It's just it's just. Uh, just a matter of try it, and uh, that's one of the things that you should do to improve your skills. Uh, try new things. Um, that's how you came with new flies, and how you came with flies that are more effective. Try, try different colors, try different sizes. Uh, put a hot spot. Um, sometimes I tie this this fly with a little uh, 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 chartreuse hot spot. When you have caddis laying eggs, that will work well. So um, those little uh, changes. Uh, can can be very productive. Um, let's see here uh, a question about about uh, uh, when you are tying uh, um, with elk or with uh, deer hair uh, to avoid uh, break offs. Um, so if you don't feel comfortable to to tie with a seventy the near or eight odd, um, try a six odd. Uh, what I would do if you don't if you don't feel comfortable if you break off a lot, I would get a GSP. Um, Vivos, for example, has a good GSP or a Kevlar, um, a thinner Kevlar um, thread. Just be careful when you use those uh, stronger uh, threads. Uh, what gonna do? We're gonna tighten it so much that it will cut your uh, elk or uh, their hair uh, fibers. So you need to have a balance between. How strong that your thread is, or how how, how tight you're gonna uh, tie that fly, uh, because you're gonna cut cut those those fibers. Uh, so that's that's a great question. But uh, I would do a 70 denier, uh, or if you don't uh, feel good with that, get a, a Kevlar uh, type of thread, and that will help you a lot. So um, I'm seeing here a couple more questions that uh, that is a uh, he. I want to send send a hello also to Spain. There's a, a couple of friends from uh, from Spain here, so hello Spain, um, and thank you for being uh, wake up so late. Uh, so the 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 next fly that I'm gonna tie um, is the last one on on the series. Uh, is one of the the ones that people ask more for uh, is a Spanish perdigon. Yeah, is one of the series of the Spanish perdigons, and it's called the Sunrise Perdigon. It's a good mix of colors of orange, 
yellow and black. Um, and this is a tribute to a friend of mine that lives now in Norway called uh, George, that, uh, that um, he was the one that uh, worked this fly very hard and we worked it very hard and I think he deserved this tribute. So George, this one is for you. And this is the Spanish Perigon, the sunrise. Um, sunrise Perigon. Um, I'm gonna start with a hopper yellow color um, on the on the on the body. Um, size 16, size 16 uh, TMC uh, 113 BLH uh, is a stronger hook. Um, so and a size 2.5 um, tungsten bead. So for the tail, I'm gonna use some fibers of. Cock the lawn. We're going to start with an orange here on the tail. Try to do the tail a little bit shorter than the the shank, the size of the shank of the hook in here. And as you as you know, this sunrise perigon is a fly that have a transition of colors from uh, from the from the orange on the on the tail nearby the tail to a yellow on the body. So what I do, I always start with an orange on the tail to lock the the cocktail feathers and the tail, and then I'll go up to, and I'll change it to a yellow. That's what I'm gonna do right now. Change to the yellow color. The yellow being a, a softer color compared with the, with the orange, you're gonna do, need to do a little bit of, you need to cover the orange a little bit better than that. Unlike in any other Spanish perigon, I like to do a very thin body and have a good conic shape on it. All right. Now I'm gonna change to black. That will be the third color that we're gonna be using. So I lock the yellow in the black. Okay, as you can see, there is three color transition in there. And now the last step will be the varnish you're going to use. I usually use a UV thin UV varnish. And I like to cover the, the body very, very well with the varnish. Don't let, let any point where the 
the oxygen or the air or the water can go go in. And then of course the good and strong UV light to finish. This is a nice varigon color to, to use during a, when you have some olives, some PMDs also. So August, September are good months for this fly. All right, this is the sunrise varigon. So thank you for watching this, uh, this uh, last why. So the sunrise paradigm, um, there's a couple of good questions here about this fly. Um, of course, as you know, uh, you can find this fly already at uh, Amqua. Uh, this is one of the new flies for this season. Um, like the, all the, the dry flies that I tied before, all of them will be available during this season. So feel free, go show up at, uh, at our shop and at Front Range Anglers in Boulder, and we'll be happy to help you with the, with the variety of these flies and help you also um, how to, um, to teach you or give you a little points, some little points how to, how to use it. Um, a question that I saw here, yes, uh, these flies will be, uh, this, these videos will be at YouTube later today. Uh, so feel free to go at, uh, at Amqua, um, um YouTube page and we will see them for sure. Um, uh, a good question that I saw here was um, if this fly would be at the end of my Euronifian rig or just for dry dropper. So that depends a lot on uh, on where you're fishing, uh, what kind of waters. Um, and of course, if you're fishing a dry dropper in a very slow water, um, this of course will be the dropper on the, on that rig. Um, if you're fishing your nymphing in uh, shallow and slower waters, this could be a very good point fly. Uh, a 2.3 or 2.7 uh, um, are already heavy enough to fish a uh, slow and, and even even fast water. If it's not very deep, um, you can use this 2.7 is perfect to do it. Um, and of course, as a dry dropper, will work very well. Um, the position I put this fly or on the, on the point point or on the tag uh, is depends only how how deep I'm am I fishing, how heavy do I need to go because these flies usually are 14, 16, 18, 20. Uh, and of course, if I need to go heavier, uh, I need probably a size 10 or eight uh, heavier fly with a bigger bead uh, on the point, and this will be on the tag. Um, if, uh, if the sizes that I tie this fly are enough um, to go deep, or at least are enough to put the flies on the level uh, on the level of water that the fish are, perfect, that will be a point fly. But uh, that only depends on what the waters you are fishing. Um, um, you're gonna position these flies depending on it. And a lot of times, if uh, it, this is the most effective fly that if you have all the takes on this fly, I fish one one fly only, one one nymph, and I fish only with one nymph. It's more effective if you found the right fly. It's more effective, better drifts. So uh, it can be also like that. It's not. It will be just one one little nymph. If you are a uh, sight nymphing, if you see fish that you can throw a nymph and see the fishing, one fly fly only can be can be enough. So that depends a lot on what kind of water you're fishing, and uh, of course on the on the on how the fish uh, behave. Um, good question here. Um, the Perigon, jig or no jig hook? Um, I tie both, I tie both. To be honest, I prefer a non-jig. Um, what I do sometimes if I need on a heavier flies, on a heavier nymphs, uh, I like the jigs because that will be the one that'll be hammering the bottom. So to avoid as much uh, getting stuck on the bottom as, uh, uh, what I do, I use a jig, or 
if you use a, a node jig hook, a straight hook, what I'll do, I use a, a slotted bead. And when you tie when you tie the fly, you pull the bead uh, up on an angle on the hook. So most part of uh, the, the probably 60, 70% of the weight of that bead will be on the top uh, above, above the, the hook. What it makes, the fly will flip. When you cast it on the water, it will flip and that hook will be up working almost like a jig. Um, so there is several ways. I, I prefer the, the way uh, the, the perigons look on a regular hook versus the jig. Uh, but that's preference. Um, I like the if I if I feel that I need to use a heavy, super heavy fly, I like to have it on jig hooks. Uh, they give him a little bit more protection on the bottom. Uh, if if uh, and and use the smaller flies with a regular hook. Um, that's a matter of preference. They will look uh, very similar. Uh, I prefer to have the regular hooks on on there uh, and use the the jig hooks for the bigger flies and heavier flies. Um, another um, question that I had was um, uh, what time of year do, do I use this fly? And um, well, like I mentioned in the video, uh, usually lately, late on the season it work very well, but that doesn't mean that it that doesn't work all, all year long. What you need to do during the fishing is, uh, what you need to do is, change flies, be able to change flies. Don't use only perdigons, mix, mix flies uh, all the time. And, and that way mixing is when you're gonna figure out the, depending on the time of year, the conditions you have, uh, how fast the water is, depending on the river, you're gonna, found, you're gonna find the patterns that work better. And if you take notes about that, you're gonna see that uh, after two, three, four years, you're gonna find the pattern that that these conditions, this time of year, these flies will work better, and that's kind of, that 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 kind of memory is will make you a, a better angler. Like I said before, time on the water, time practicing, think out of the box once in a while, just go wild, do different things, and you, you, on the on the with the flies, change flies to different flies, fish a marsh brown or a a, a green drake during winter or or during spring. Uh, fish caddies uh, when you don't have a caddies hatch sometimes the fish the fish see so many patterns being cast to them over and over over and over that you need to go out of the box to to be able to to catch some of them um so another 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 question here my favorite uh, stretch of the colorado to fish so there is a stretch that I, I think that is amazing. Uh, I, I, I don't fish, I don't fish the lower Colorado and what I, when, I, when I say lower Colorado from Glenwood Springs down. I floated it a couple of times, amazing, but it's a little bit too far away from me, uh, for me to get there. Uh, I like to fish everything that is around below Kremlin, uh, Gore Canyon, Rancho, all that until, until Dot Cerro. Those are great places to fish. Um, is if you like if you like to fish with dry flies, there's a lot of flat flat water on the Colorado. It's challenging. You need to wait a lot of hours to have some activity sometimes, but uh, it pays off. is is super fun. It's super fun to fish. All right. So I see that. Uh, there's no more questions here. So uh, just to remind you, this, this flies will be on, on the market this season already. Uh, look for, on your local, shop, local shops. Uh, um, uh, Amco will be coming out with the same series, uh, with a signature series next season again. Uh, uh, make sure that uh, you visit me or visit us at Front Range Anglers in Boulder. I can guarantee you we're not the biggest shop. Can, we are the shop with the best team in the U.S. That I can guarantee you that we have answers for almost everything from, from fishing the front range, bigger rivers, small rivers, lakes, uh, and all over the world. We have a great adventure travel uh, section, so you'll have a lot of fun. Uh, so don't forget to visit us at Front Range Anglers. Don't forget to, to get uh, your Amco products, the best in the market.
Thank you.